Did you know that according to the Hawaii 2020 census, there are over 160,000 Hispanics in Hawaii? That's about 11% of the 1.4 million people that call Hawaii home. So how do you say that you're Hispanic from Hawaii without saying that you're Hispanic from Hawaii? We say, hola, hola y aloha. aloha. Welcome to the first episode of Hola y Aloha. We're a talk show representing the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in Hawaii. Our mission is to strengthen Hawaii's Hispanic business community and foster economic, social, and cultural development for all. The Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii was created for Latinos and those who love us. I'm Barbara DeLuca, president and co-founder of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. And I am Marisol Ruiz, Vice President and Co-Founder of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce here in Hawaii. And joining us today is Mari Villa, CEO of Via Business Consulting and Co-Founder of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. Today, we will host a short discussion about Hispanic population in Hawaii and how we founded the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in, of Hawaii in 2019. The Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in Hawaii, let me just give you a little history. So in 2017 to 2018, Marisol Ruiz and I wanted to do some networking with other Latino professionals to grow our real estate business. By trade, I'm a broker uh, with Soldier to Soldier Hawaii Realty, and Marisol is a broker loan officer uh, with Edge Home Financing. Since there are over 260 Hispanic Chambers of Commerce in the United States, we thought it would be a great idea to join our local Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in Hawaii. After doing some research, we learned that there was a successful organization called Latino Business Hawaii that had existed 10 years prior. So I called the Hawaii Chamber of Commerce and I was referred to Mari Villa, Latino Business Hawaii founder. All three of us met for lunch and the rest is history. So Mari, can you take us back as to how and why you founded Latino Business Hawaii? Okay, well, first of all, I'd like to say aloha and thank you for having me come on the show with you. Um, we found it, it was a Cuban, two Puerto Ricans, and myself, Mexican. Uh, we founded um, Latin Business Hawaii and started 2007, I want to say. And um, we decided that we needed a place not only to get together, but to share each other's businesses so that, or not only our businesses grow, but to make sure that uh, we we support each other and one another. So we started Latin Business Hawaii, and I was the president. Uh, Jose Villa was the vice president. I had we had Ray Cruz from Hawaii Public Radio, and we said Jose Jesus Puerto from Sol de Cuba, the restaurant that used to be here. And we started off with just us four, and slowly in our board and slowly we we grew so fast and we started doing things that um even we didn't expect uh we started getting a lot more members the board grew from four of us to 13 of us um we had um a lot of support from the not the hispanic businesses but even other businesses so we were able to um, to grow the organization. Eventually, we started even giving scholarships to uh, Keikis. We created the Keiki to College Scholarship Awards. So we gave away. So that happened for like three or four years. And then I left. I uh, went to go finish my degrees and uh, became a professor and then in the mainland. And then Jose had taken it over and then other people had taken it over after he joined me. And so when we moved back in 2016 full time, we we knew there wasn't a chamber of commerce anymore. And uh, again, like you said, uh, we met and we started the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. That's wonderful. Thank you, Mari. I do have a question for you. Um, the Hispanic yes. Chamber of Commerce, um, Sorry, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. Uh, can you tell us a little bit of, uh, you know, how and why you created it as a 501c3? So in our business, we help uh, 
create 501c3s here in Hawaii and actually across the nation. We've done it across the nation. And um, so when we looked at other chambers of commerce across the nation, some of the Hispanic chambers were 501c3s, which was a great idea because then you can go after grants, uh, your donations can be tax deductible. And in more than that, the, the donations, you, you would be able to get a lot more donations because when we did the Latin Business of Hawaii, we did it as a regular 501c6, which is normal chambers. And we had a lot of people say, wow, I'd like to give you, are you guys a 501c3? And we go, no, we're not. Like, wow, well, well, we can't give you. Mm. And so when we thought we're going to do it over again, then let's be a 501c3 so that we can get, you know, donations and foundation grants and some banks and credit unions that wanted to support what we were doing, we're not, are now able to support the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. That's wonderful. And, you know, grant writing is incredibly difficult. Can you share a little bit about us? Uh, with- yes about your business and the, the VIA business consulting and what you do. Sure, thank you, Marisol. So, uh, my husband and I were grant writers. I was a grant writer for YWCA. He was a grant writer for Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum. And in February of 2019, we both quit our jobs to do it full time. Actually, we did it because we wanted to travel. And then 2020 hit and we don't go anywhere. <laughs> but <laughs> right. I will tell you, but in 2019, we did. We went to Japan. We went, I mean, we traveled almost 11 months out of the 12 months in 2019. And we loved it because we can do grant writing from anywhere. So we write grants for nonprofits all over the nation. We just finished and submitted a $3.1 million grant. We brought in in the last two years into Hawaii, we brought in over $11 million into just by grants alone mm-hmm. uh, for different nonprofits. And so what we do, it, grant writing, it, we used to be journalists. That's what we did. I was a television news producer. We produced a, a, a new show on Hawaii Public Radio for six years. We published Hawaii Hispanic News for 12 years, and um, and then I became a professor, a journalism professor. So we turned all that writing skills into storytelling, but we now tell stories for nonprofits. Because of my accounting and business management degree, I do a lot of the accounting portion, my husband does the writing, and then when we're ready to submit, we change places and we read each other's uh, work so that we make sure that we give 110% of everything that we do. Uh, do we get all the grants? No. But we get about 77% of our grants wow. are funded. Wow, that's huge. $11 million. Yes. You're, you're a great storyteller. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you thank so thank, much. <laughs> and thank you for getting us our 501c3 designation. That's oh, I think it was more important because um, I know that we stepped down in 2019 because we got busy after. Like, it's easier when you just have a job. In, and forgive me, I'm not dismissing just having a job. But when you have your own business, you're uh, you're, you're working 24-7, yeah. really. And you're constantly, you're, you're getting up because you have a mainline client that needs to meet at noon and you got to be up at 6 you got to be there at six in the morning. You got to be up at four. You know, you're working on Saturday and Sunday. So we stepped down from the chamber, um, but we still support it. I think it's an important mission. I think that it's important what the Hispanic Chamber does. Um, And um, I I think, uh, Barbara, you might, we're going to bring this up about the 2010 census. Right. Uh Right. Yeah. Right. Trust me, that's huge. We understand what it's like to be a contract worker, being in real estate industry, um, working weekends and nights. And, you know, we, we do what it takes to, to run our business. So we're, we're right there with you. Um, yes, I did want to ask you, uh, you know, 
the beginning of the show, we quoted the stat that there's a, you know, 160,000 Hispanics in Hawaii representing 11% of our population. So I wanted to ask you if you could share with us how you participated in the data, data gathering of the census in 2010 when you, you know, participated. Well, in 2010 and in 2020, I did work mm -hmm. both with, I work with the Census Bureau. Mm -hmm. um, in 2010, I had the privilege that many, uh, many other partners in other states didn't have. I had the privilege to go to all the islands and meet the Hispanic community and talk to them about the importance of the Census Bureau. And I'll tell you, uh, I, I met, <laughs> there was a church in Kona, and 500 people attended that church, yeah. and nobody spoke English. And it was, their church had fallen down, and they were having service outside, and which is nice because it was summer when I went, but I got to talk to so many people out there and talk to them about the Census Bureau and the importance. I went to Maui, I spoke there, Kauai, and I was able to meet a lot of the Latinos. It helps that it helped that uh, we published the newspaper. Mm -hmm. That really helps um, because, as you know, our folks in our countries they they um, trust the media a little bit more than they would government employees, right? Mm -hmm. So definitely. But there's a lot of things I found out. So I found out that. Uh, 49% of the Latinos in Hawaii have a higher education, which is unheard of when only 13% have a higher education nationwide. The other 51% um, aren't doing too bad either because they work in fishery, they work in um, hotels, they work in the fields in Kona coffee fields. They so they're working um, in all the other industries to make Hawaii what Hawaii is. But I'm sure you, uh, I'm sure you know that, you know, Latinos aren't, you know, the new kids on the block. We help build this block. You got right? that right. <laughs> yeah, you brought up a great point. So just bringing to light the, the Latino population on the islands, I was watching a news segment about, um, Hispanic Heritage Month, and they highlighted this family on Big Island that own a coffee um, farm. It's called Aloha um, Star Coffee Company. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to them. Their names are Karina and Armando Rodriguez. And I, I found them on Instagram, and then I sent them an instant message, and right away Karina invited us out for the coffee festival. So um, I went out there with one of our board members, and we met them, and it, it was just such a great story, you know, to go out and meet other Latinos on our islands because we're the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for Hawaii, which includes all islands. And we're open to everybody, Latinos and those who love us, right? Yep. Yep. And, so and I love that uh -huh. I love that um, you you go out and reach out to them because it's important that they know that we see them. Right. Yeah, it was it was a great trip. I we're looking forward to going to Maui and you know back to Big Island this year. Um so speaking of the Hispanic population in Hawaii, what, what can you tell us about how did we get here? So, geez, I tell you, my husband's a very better storyteller than I am when it comes to that, because he <laughs> he has it right on the top of uh -huh. his head, the the year, you know, 17. Oh, right. <laughs> and, and all I know, I'll tell you what I know okay. off the top of my head is that Francisco Marin was the first Hispanic in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He was... King Kamehameha the first. He was his vintner, and uh, he was his doctor, and he also was his businessman. Vineyard Boulevard is called Vineyard Boulevard because Francisco Marie built the vineyards around there, where he made the wine and the grapes and everything else. Wow. And it's amazing what we actually brought in. We brought in the papayas, we brought in the pineapples. So all of these things, like I said, we're not the new kids in the block. We we help build this block. Uh, that was the first. Then it came the Paniolos, which actually the story goes that they call them Paniolos because when King Kamehameha the first brought in um, horses and calves, and they didn't know how to how to gather them and what to do with them, so they brought in the Paniolos, 
And they call him that because they used to have the handkerchief and we call mm -hmm. it pañuelo, mm -hmm. right? right? And so they ended up calling, what, what do you call this? They would say, and then it goes pañuelos. And that's where we hear that that's how pañuelos got their name is from the pañuelos that they use, you know, the red and yellow and mm -hmm. the ones that aren't yes. allowed in Compton anymore. <laughs> that's so interesting. I, I We have to learn more about the years and everything and, and be able to and tell then, the stories. And then came the Puerto Ricans. The Puerto yes. Ricans came after that. And they brought their Kachi Kachi music, which is still heard here. And mm -hmm. um, they came after San Siriaco hurricane hit Puerto Rico and they brought in um, mm -hmm. about 100 Puerto Ricans. And you could see it at the White Pahu Plantation Museum over there. La Casita is there. Mm -hmm. And okay. um, it, was, it was really beautiful how uh, the different ethnicities the beautiful thing about Hawaii, Hispanics in Hawaii, is we look like everybody else. It's a bad thing is we look like everybody else, so nobody knows we're here. I mean, <laughs> when I go to the mainland, <laughs> even when I go to the mainland and I tell them I'm from Hawaii, they're like, oh, my Hawaiian friend. I'm like, no, no, I'm not Hawaiian. Like, I have to right? really be careful with that. And, and, and they're like, oh, but you're from what? No, no, it's a different. You know, exactly. we're not Californians and Floridians and Texans, right? We're people from Hawaii. And so we have to explain to that. And, but it's a beautiful thing because we do look like everybody else. It's, it's, we melt in and we, we, we fit. And Hawaiians and, and Latinos are alike, right? We, we hug, kiss. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went mm -hmm. to go see my doctor today and, and I gave her a hug because that's what we do. Yes. Yes. We love to share our food and our culture and our dance, our music, everything, just like the whole Hawaiian people. We have a lot of exactly in our cultures. Exactly. I love it. Um, yep. and hence the name of our show, Hola y Aloha. You know, how do you say you're Hispanic from Hawaii <laughs> without saying it? So we're Hola y Aloha. We're, it's a, a beautiful blend of Latinos in Hawaii. Um, so um, go ahead. The Civic Beat uh, did a, excuse me, did a, uh, article recently they said by 2023 we should mm -hmm. actually be more like 183,000. wow i read that more like 12 point something percent of the yep, population it's exciting percent. Yep, yeah so we're growing and they say by 2025 we should be almost 15 percent of the population um wow. but and i'll tell you so my husband and i have five children 18 16 grandchildren and eight great grandkids Wow. And almost all of them live here. That's already, if you start counting the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Then we brought my mom and my sister to live with us. My nephew moved in here from LA four months ago. He's now uh, works at Diamond Head Theater and is a DOE employee, right? So we're coming here. We were bringing family. We're hey, we you guys exactly. We love the weather. Uh, as Guy Hagi says, you know, the best weather on the planet, right? And we love the culture because our culture is very similar. And it's not too far from, and in my opinion, it's not too far from LA, from where most of our families are, at least from us. Right. Just like the family on the Big Island, they brought their mother out, to, you know, yeah. and, and they have kids now, so they're growing. Yep. So, um, well, you know, I bet our, our audience has some questions, you know, like, how do you have to be Hispanic to join our organization? Uh, absolutely not. It's for Latinos and those who love us. And why should you join? Well, just as we discussed, we're, we're a growing demographic, the fastest ethnic growing demographic. So, well, you know, there's lots of opportunity to connect with the Hispanic market and grow your business, right? Yeah. And I think it's really important too, especially, and thank you so much, Mari. You know, when we had lunch that day, um, it's true, we never look back and we're really excited and passionate uh, to live in a space. You know, Hawaii is amazing, it's paradise, but we are uh, geographically, right, separated from the mainland. We are, you know, pretty isolated when the ocean. <laughs> uh, so geographically, we already feel a little bit isolated. And, you know, when we give people the statistics of how many Latinos are on the island, everybody without fail is shocked every time nobody can believe that there's actually that many latinos because we we're not really out there right so uh you know you're an integral part of this uh organization and and our our job and our mission and our duty is really to 
uh, provide a space for people to come together and like you guys are saying, share our culture and our music and and help our businesses grow and thrive uh, in a place that is a little bit isolated. So we're building a community all over again. So thank you so much for that, um, Mari. And we're really excited. It's a lot of work. <laughs> but it is. To be, <laughs> it's to a be lot of work, me. but it's a lot of opportunity too. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. So, you know, people want to know how do you become a member? So um, Barbara is really good at the uh, social media aspect of things. So you guys can follow us on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. Um, and for 2023, we're really excited. Uh, you can join the Hispanic uh, Chamber of Commerce here in Hawaii for free. Um, you know, give us a try. Be a part of our organization. Help us grow. There's a lot of fantastic events and opportunities coming up. Um, and we're just trying to really, you know, grow our tribe and and, and connect with one another. Um, and you can go to our website, hcchhawaii.org. Thank you, Marisol. Um, do you have any last uh, words, Mari? Well, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that we're, we're very inclusive. So we include everybody. We want the um, Asian community to come out. Uh, we want the uh, Filipino, Filipino community to come out. We want the uh, county, you know, like the Kalua, the Kapolei. I mean, uh, one of the things that we did at LPH is I was an ambassador for the main chamber of Commerce of Hawaii and part of a member organization that had all the presidents there. They don't have that anymore, but it's nice that if we could still get together with them so that we, the thing is, is that we find the best practices by with the other people, right. right? And that's how we grow. So I encourage you to join the chamber of commerce. I, I get to know the Latinos in Hawaii. We have some incredible, incredible Latinos. I mean, we have the best heart surgeon here is La Hispanic. Uh, you know, we have the first pilot, uh, the Mexican airline, female pilot here. Uh, the only historian at the USS Arizona, he's Latino. So when you're looking, I mean, like you said, we've made a huge contribution, but more than that, we are part of this family in Hawaii. That's a valid point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we have actually joined the Kapolei Chamber of Commerce and they've joined the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, the Kapolei Chamber of Commerce is partnered with us in promoting our Buenos Dias breakfast networking events. So mm -hmm. we're hosting those every other month. So every other month on the second Tuesday, you can find us at El Ranchero, the taqueria over at Kamakana Ali'i. We're having our breakfast networking events there. So they're, prom they're promoting it on their website and on our website and on the, on the Hawaii Chamber of Commerce website as well, because we've joined the Hawaii Chamber of Commerce. So like you said, we, you know, we need to support each other for all of us to thrive. So that was a great point. Um, so, well, this is a uh, hola y aloha on ThinkTech Hawaii. <laughs> We've been talking with Mari Villa, CEO of Via Business Consulting and the co-founder of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. And we've been talking about Hispanics in Hawaii with Marisol Ruiz, our vice president and co-founder. So thank you everybody for joining us today, Mari and Mari, Marisol. <laughs> and um, <laughs> thank you to our viewers for watching. We'll be back in two weeks. So please tune in and tell your friends to tune in. Until then, I'm Barbara DeLuca, president of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce in Hawaii. Adios. Aloha, everyone. Adios. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.